Hello everyone, welcome to another Friday Conversation. Today I'm talking to Elaine Roche from Kites in Manchester, who is a tax and planning partner. Um, Elaine, thank you for joining us. Come and introduce yourself. Oh, thank you. Um, well, I'm, uh, as Hannah said, Elaine Roach. I have just joined Kite, so this is my first week there. Uh, I joined the tax team there, so I deal with um, wills and trusts, uh, tax planning, estate planning, um, and all that really exciting death, tax and madness kind of stuff. You must be pretty busy at the moment then. S yeah, sadly. Um, Things are pretty busy, partly, you know, sadly because people are passing away, but also people have got more time to think about things um, and they're spending more time with their family. So are are deciding whether they like them or not. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we're um, reasonably busy across the board. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting times. So you must be either the second or the third person I've been speaking to in this series who's moved firms during lockdown mm -hmm. um, and you were just sharing with me one of your biggest achievements on, was it Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, Tuesday morning, so Monday evening, um, uh, a colleague, a new colleague de delivered a huge box of wires and screens and phones and little boxes of gadgetry um, on first thing Tuesday morning um, via the wonders of technology and the telephone. I had IT talking me through how to put it all together. And as you can see from here, I am, it's all working. Um, so, you know, f first time in my career, I've not broken some IT, so I was very proud of myself. Oh, no, that's brilliant. Because those are the, the technical things, aren't they? I mean, there's lots of things that go with changing firms. And you shared with me, you've been at your previous firm for 11 years. So it's a big upheaval and a big change, even at the best of times. But then, you know, the IT and getting the systems working is just the most important thing right now, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we've, we're, it's working really well. I mean, yeah, surprisingly easily to, to pick up with everything. Obviously, we are all now zoom aficionados and know how to to do everything with it and it's just made life so much easier um you sort of meeting with with colleagues we've even had a, a social zoom call with the fellow female partners um so yeah it's go, going really well it's just the the small things you don't know how to do so just before i came um to talk to you Anna, i had to email a colleague to work out how on earth to actually send an engagement letter out I've no idea <laughs> Oh, well, do you know, that's really funny because one of my new colleagues at Gunner Cook, um, we have a buddy arrangement at Gunner Cook. So when somebody oh, new okay. starts, they buddy up with a, a more experienced partner. So my buddy emailed me this morning and said, I'm sorry for this silly question, but I really need to know how to send a letter out. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I've got no idea. I haven't had to do it yet. So, um... Oh, absolutely. But, you know, I was like, yes, I can answer that one. That's easy. <laughs> But yeah, it is. It's always these silly. Li it's like it reminds me of the first day in an office back in normal times where you just didn't know where the printer was or how to work it or the scanner. And it seems so silly to ask those questions. But they're the things you need to know. Yeah, absolutely. They are the, the absolute key things. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll slowly but surely. I've not had to ask about how to get to the toilet. So I've, I'm, I'm OK with that one, at least that's good and you know where the kitchen is so yeah, that, that's yeah. all positive yeah. yeah so just before we started you and I were talking a bit about hours and expectations and the culture of presenteeism and things how much did you work from home before lockdown is it something you did a lot or very infrequently how different is it now um I didn't do that much to be honest I would probably only do it um if I had a specific really complicated thing I had to get my head around or you know if there was a child ill or something so before that I was uh, full-time five days a week in, in an office um, so yeah it's been a, a huge change. Mm, and and how, how are you finding it at the moment I know it's not you know it's easy to say oh this is the remote working we always wanted but actually you know we didn't want to be homeschooling at the same time I know <laughs> you've got a little one because because we've met once or twice this yeah. morning or this afternoon but <laughs> um, yeah is it I suppose it's, it's just not able to compare with the situation we're in now to what normal flexible working would be like, is it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really difficult. It's working as well as it can do. So I've got an eight year old um, and a four year old. So they need a lot of, you know, in terms of schooling and, and all the rest of it, it is very much you have to be sat with them. Um, thankfully, my husband's at home as well. So between us, we kind of balance it. 
Um, he's not at home today, hence why we've had a few interruptions. Um, <laughs> but no, he's, um, yeah, it's, it's a balance. And I think, you know, at that age, eight and four, I'm not too bothered about the, um, the uh, intellectual education. It's more <laughs> the hug than getting them out in the garden. Uh, yeah. yeah, certainly in terms of the work life, I could see this, you know, working a bit quite well on the way forward. Mm. Yeah, really? definitely. Oh. So what, what do you think have been your highs and lows of lockdown so far? Um, gosh, Ooh, well, I'll start with the lows. I think the first couple of weeks were just, just hard to get your head around, A, working from home, be the whole scary thing that was this unknown disease coming through and to keep mm. everyone's sanity. Um, I think by week two, I had a, a bit of a ugly crying moment, shall we say. Mm. Yeah. Um, but things seem to have, we've sort of settled into a routine now. Um, and sort of the mornings are less fraught. You know, I'm, I can get up and do stuff before the kids are awake. Um, and then actually when they're awake and getting up, I can actually spend some time with them. Um, definitely the highlights have been being able to spend more time, you know, with the nature and, and getting outdoors with the kids. Mm, yeah, definitely. That certainly the weather improving oh. as it did at the beginning was a, was a huge blessing. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it was. So have you, have you learned anything about yourself, your work, your family over lockdown that you think might be useful for other people? Oh, um, what have I learned? I suppose it's that incessant busyness that I think we're just, we force ourselves into it. We, you know, when you're around everybody else, you think, oh, I must, I must, you know, more, 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 always busy. But actually now I've sort of, I've stopped doing as much, you know, on purpose. I'm actually going, no, I don't need to be busy. Um, and actually just taking that time and saying, no, I'm just sitting and listening to the birds. Um, I've sort of developed a, I will do, I do a little bit of yoga first thing in the morning. Um, and some reflection and then at the end of the day I kind of close my computer we're lucky we've got a separate room that I can work in so I can close the door and absolutely I don't do anything in the evening whereas I think pre-lockdown I was probably always had an ear out for the phone whereas now because it's all on top of each other I'm very much now in the, the evenings are mine. Mm, that's really interesting isn't it I mean those are certainly you and I have not worked together um, on, on a sort of coaching level at all yeah. but those are certainly things I say to my clients you know um, do something like that in the morning like you say meditation yoga reflection writing whatever it is even just having 10 minutes of peace and quiet with a cup of tea yeah. um, and then yeah that that physical space separation if you can is always great so that in your mind that's your working space and not your home space and then shutting the door and shutting the computer down at, at the end of the day. Um, so do you think that's just sort of helped you cope with the sort of ups and downs and the stresses yeah. of lockdown? I think that's it. As I got into that, that routine more, I've just felt calmer about it. You know, it's sort of, once I finish work, um, I sort of close the door and then I actually go downstairs and on the, because we've had such nice weather, I've been able to, to sit out on the deck with a, a bottle of alcohol free beer um, and just go, right, this is, I mean, it was it was it was alcoholic beer to start with, but it you know calmed down a bit now. Um, <laughs> Non-alcoholic beer now um, at, at sort of half five six o'clock, and that just just sort of goes right, just sort of draws that line for me, um, and then on with the chaos of, of family life. Mm, yeah, that sounds really good. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm glad that seems to be working for you in terms of, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, enjoyment of family life at home and that separation mm -hmm. with work. I'm sure there are certainly a lot of people who, who could probably learn from that and, and try and put some of that into, into practice. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's interesting, isn't it, the different things that we've, we all learn about ourselves in this time. Absolutely, because it's interesting. In fact, that was something you said at the beginning of when, when I asked this question about the busy, busy. You know, we are, as a profession, so used to being busy. It is the sort of, you know, the, the badge of honour. You know, yeah. it, it, you don't want to be a not busy lawyer because then, you know, you can't be very good. Yeah. <laughs> Surely yeah. you should be busy. And there's been this sort of race to the race to the bottom, I guess, in terms of, you know, our health and, and happiness and things to, to be the busiest we possibly can. But, you know, busy doesn't necessarily mean productive and certainly not happy or healthy. Um, so that would be a great realisation for, for people to make over this period, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I think 
the more efficient you can be just because you can do things in half the time does not need, mean you need to do double of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I and love that. <laughs> you just have where you started from then, except, you know, you, you've got even more clients bothering you. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it, I think we've really got, each of us have got to, you know, decide what, what is our own level. And I think it, it takes courage to actually say, do you know what? I, I'm not going to look at the world around me and all the other busy, busy people. I'm going to, this is what I want. This is my happy. And even if it's not, you know, six figure salary or whatever, you know, driving the right car or the right type of clients or in the office till 7 p.m., this is my happy. And, but, but being able to hold on to that when all around you does something different is, is not easy. No, it's not. It's really, really interesting you say that because, yeah, that's certainly something I've, I've found over the years. And I started to think, well, you know, you look at these really successful people, whatever you judge that to be, you know, the Richard Bransons of the world or whatever. Yeah. And I thought, I'm sure some days he probably only works two, three, four hours and he still has, you know, a, a great business. Although, of course, we won't talk about the <laughs> stuff at the moment. But, you know, six yeah. months ago, I could say this and it, it was yeah. true. But I thought, you know, yes, why do we measure our success on the, the number of hours we work? I would feel more successful the less hours I work. Yeah, absolutely. There's a great thing that was going around. I think it was on LinkedIn I saw it. And it was about, it says about an American tourist somewhere um, in South America. And he says to the fisherman, well, why don't you get another boat and work more? And the fisherman's like, well, why would I want to do that? And he goes through, this guy explains how you could go through and, you know, syndicate it and bring it up and da, 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 and make it worldwide and you end up working in the US for a major corporation and then you get to retire back to a little fishing village and the fisherman said well I'm already in the fishing village why would I why would I want to do all the rest of it yeah exactly yeah I, re I remember my seeing. whole life yeah as yeah. now rather than waiting till I retire to live like that oh it's so true yeah we work so hard for this ideal life whereas actually sometimes you can look around and see what elements you've already got of it yeah um yeah yeah that's so true yeah and the, the busyness definitely I if that is something that a lot of people could learn from this experience and hopefully take back into their lives, hopefully not just go mm. back to the way it was, which I don't think we're going to be able to you know, for a very long yeah. time anyway. Um, but I do have some hope for that because, you know, I think there's a, there's a statistic that it takes between 20 and 60 days to make a new habit. And I think all of us have made mm. new habits in this period. So there's no yeah. reason we shouldn't carry them on afterwards. Mm. I think it was interesting. So kites this week have sent out, obviously, with the an easing of lockdown and looking to the future, we all got sent um, a staff survey as to how we found working from home, what has worked, what hasn't, and actually, when we are allowed back in the office, what, how much do people see that they would need to be in the office? Um, so that you know, they're already looking at how to reconfigure the space, and also, I guess, how much space. You know, we've got staff who are traveling from Staffordshire. We've got people coming from Crosby into the central Manchester, which is, you know, hour and a half journey each way. Mm -hmm. So if they don't need to be traveling in, you know, if they only need to be in the office one day a week, then, you know, that's 80% less desk space that's needed. Um, granted, obviously, it looks like hot desking will be out for, for out of the question for a while. Mm. But, you know, they're really, you know, I think, and it's not just kites, I think a lot of firms have found that, actually productivity hasn't dropped that much. Um, you know, people are getting the work done um, and, you know, it's just about looking after the mental health and the, the obviously there's, there's issues around physical health and safety if your staff are scrunched in a ball doing their work on their bed. But um, there's, there's certainly lessons to be learned and I think the office space will look very different when we get to our, our new normal, whatever that will look like. Mm, no, absolutely. I mean, there's so many things that, you know, I've been talking about for years that actually mm -hmm. might come about, like, as you say, yeah. less space needed for offices eventually, once we don't have to do so much social distancing, but less yeah. commuting. So, you know, better for the environment and less time wasted commuting when you could actually be, you know, doing, doing some work or getting some exercise or whatever it is. Yeah, um, absolutely. So you just hope that we 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 keep those lessons mm. and i read recently you know after um seven seven you know use of the underground understandably dropped dramatically and people wondered if that would be a change for for a lifetime but apparently within two months it was back to to levels before that so you know we 
we do have this habit as humans of, of reverting to, to type as it were so if, I suppose if we can put in ways of making life easier for people to give them another option then um, then that'd be great but we'll just have to have to mm. see. No, absolutely. It'd be a very interesting time. And it was interesting that you said, you know, um, for some, they've not noticed a, a huge drop in productivity or in fact an increase. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, when we're not having to do the homeschooling anymore, we're back to more of a yes. normal, you know, we can work from home, but yes, our children are at school. I mean, just imagine yeah. how the productivity will be then. Yeah, that's, yeah, actually I hadn't f factored that in, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that would be huge. You know, you would get so much done um you know your day could then be shorter because you're just far more efficient um i mean there's then the, the balancing with the whole um you know uh sort of social isolation and there is a real benefit of working together and collaborating mm. and actually being in physical presence so there's definitely a balance to be struck between being able to work from home and working from the office Oh, definitely. I, I don't think anybody has disagreed with that that I've been speaking to, you know, even, you know, hardened fans of working at home like me, you know, I still want to be in the office at least once a week when, when we're back to it because, yeah. yeah, I miss my colleagues and and that interaction. I mean, I even, so silly as it sounds, miss the commute because I only did it once a week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I even miss walking through Manchester and getting my coffee on the way to the office, you know. Um, so I'll be, I'll be glad to get back to that sense of normality. But yeah, it is a balance. And I think, as I say, everybody I've spoken to agrees with that. It's not about 100% working from home all the time. It's, it's both. Yeah, I think, that, I think what has been really great is the, you know, the, the in innovative ways that people have, have worked out how to do things from home. I mean, certainly at my last firm, you know, bill, billing, you know, it's always a nightmare at the end of the month and there's paper flying everywhere. And then suddenly with very little notice, it was 23rd of the month, we were locked down. We've got to, our accounts team had to work out a new system of how to do everything online and, da, 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 and our IT team were up and they, they did it. You know, mm. necessity is the mother of invention and they've done it and it's, you know, working and, you know, we've had to, because we were forced into doing all these things whilst it was a nightmare at the time to do them, they're now in place. So actually, you know, there's, there's less barriers to homeworking going forward. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. And I do watch with lots of interest about what the coming months and year or so is, is going to bring for the whole argument of, of remote working, flexible working, mm -hmm. all those sorts of things. So hopefully it will, it will turn out to be change for the good. Yeah. I'd hope yeah oh well thank you so much for talking to us elaine especially in your first week of your new job and i know you're very busy so i really appreciate your time no problem at all hannah lovely to speak to you as well you too